Hi there! Let's talk about how you can create a string piece with motion like this. Hello there, this is Sam with Second Tier Sound. Really nice to see you here again. So let's talk about how you can create more interesting string arrangement by using motion. You know, it's very important that the string players play melodies and have some motion going on. If you just hold down the chords, it just won't really work. It will sound very stale and boring. There is no motion and the string players won't like you very much. So we're going to actually talk about how you create a simple motif, how you apply it to your string orchestra and how you create more motion. So let's get going. Let's start by sketching up a simple melody and the best sketch tool, as you know, is the piano. So let's start with that and let's see what we can do. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. So there are many ways you can do this. A lot of composers work really hard on making sure that you're interested in the music and they do that a lot by repeating stuff. You know, the extreme version is pop music today when you kind of already know what's going to happen before you heard the song. But otherwise, there are many subtle ways that you can keep the listener engaged. The most easy way is to repeat the line exactly the same again, but just to create some variety because you want that. You can change the chord, so you can do exact same melody but a different chord. I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to use the same pattern of notes, but I'm going to move it a little bit further down. So, change the chord and... And then I'm going to reverse that pattern. So, what is reverse? Well, if we look at the original line here, I could do... See, it's sort of the same thing. It feels familiar. I just reversed the order, so to speak, or yeah, and the notes as well, but it still feels like it's the same melody. So I did that down here. And if you paid attention, you noticed that I added or changed the last note so that it goes up to the seven instead of, because it sounds better. So there's some variety there. It still sounds the same and I like it better. And then the last chord will be kind of repeating the last section. So we got, right? Okay. All right, that will be a great theme that we can work with. So now when we got our melody, we want to play with our instruments and see what works the best. And a pro tip here is to choose an ensemble patch where you have all the strings available to you so that you are not limited to just one range. So for example, kind of nice, but perhaps a little bit low. Let's try way up. It's also nice, but I think I want the mid register here. Yeah, that's the one I'm going to use. And actually, I have a perfect patch for this. It's called Agitato Violins. I like that one a lot. So let's record this here. From the beginning, we have the click on. No, now we have it on. And we go from the beginning. All right, that works really well. So let's add some basses to that. And I have to say, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm using the oscillation strings by Ben Osterhaus that are really good for this. But don't think this is not possible with the other libraries. You can just add a simple bass rhythm. I'm just creating the bass chords here. Let's try and record this.
let's then add in the meats, you know, to add extra flavor and stuff like that. So let's look at the violas here. Now, before I add the motion to it, I just wanted to show something that a lot of people do that can speed up the work, but it doesn't always work so great, is that when you play the chords in, it's like three-part harmony directly into the violas, like this, let's see. And it works quite all right. If you don't care about the details, if you want to make something quickly, then there it is. But I'm not going to do that because I want something more realistic and more interesting. And I also want to say that when you do that, you are tripling the amount of viola players. You're creating a different texture that is not really cohesive the rest of the sound, right? And then the voicing is not that great. It overlaps the melody a little bit. And also string players love to do melodies just to play, you know, long chords. At least there's some motion in the dynamic layering there, but otherwise it's really not that fun. So you do want to do more than that. So let's see what we can do then. We have the melody line like this. Which is uh, uh, starting on F, like it's starting with the first note and ending on the fifth. So that we can add the third to, it's not anywhere. So we could just do... But again, we want to create more motion. So let's add something to that. And if you don't know what to do here, what kind of melody am I playing? Well, you could riff off the main melody, try to do something similar to that. Or you could do the notes within the harmony. Or you could, for example, just play with the notes around that note that you're on. That almost always works. You're sort of still within the vicinity of that chord note, but you're adding nice flavors. In this case, you would add the second and uh, fourth. So let's see what that sounds like if we do that. Yeah, that works really great. And actually, what I'm doing here is that I'm doing a response to the melody. And that's not a good trick. Instead of just always playing exactly the same as the melody, let the melody breathe and then come in with a harmony afterwards. So that's what I'm doing here as well. That really works. So let's continue with that idea of responding and doing that sort of dancing around the note we're on. So the next chord, you, you know, okay. it, it's a B flat. So in this case, it's quite low. We don't want to go higher. So, and we don't want to go down to the, Thirds too low, I think. So let's try with the fifth. It's kind of nice that we have the fifth, the fourth, and the sixth there. That probably works really well. And then we have the G minor. And then we're playing the seven up there, so we can do the third up here. So we're keeping that pattern for each note. It's going to work really great. And then we have C. going up to the root, so we can do the third here as well. Let's try that from the beginning and record that in. I think that works quite well. So let's add in the cello as well. And you could say, let's just add the notes that we haven't played already. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that, or less complicated, actually. The cello is quite low, so in general, you can't just add a bunch of complex chord notes. It wouldn't really sound that good. 
So a good rule is to either double the bass an octave above or the same note if you if it can play that, or a fifth above. You can if you play higher up in the register, you can add more chord notes as well. So let's look at that. The first one is F, right? So we can add the fifth to that. All right, so let's start here's F, right? And we have a fifth, it will be a nice thick chord. And then let's go up to the octave. It's a nice uh, melody there. And let's go to, you can always go to the nine, so. And then the seventh. And we might as well go to the six as well. Yeah, that would be perfect. Let's try and see what that sounds like from the beginning. All right, that's really nice. And then the next chord is B flat. So let's add the fifth again, and that would be the F. So we can go down a little bit here, since the melody is also lower. And then let's go up to the third. I'm not going to the root this time because we are playing the fifth in the violas, if you remember, here. So we might as well play the third here. And let's do that dance around. Actually, let's not do that dance. Let's... Yeah, that works. All right. So that will be, you know, going to the third and then the second and the fourth there. That will work really nicely. And then we have the G minor. So let's do the from the fifth again. And here I see we can actually go all the way up because all those notes are beautiful in the G minor. So fifth, sixth, seventh, root, nine, root, or the nine is also the second. Actually, let's go to the seventh. Yeah. And then we can repeat that in the next chord, I think, the C7 sus, so we'll start on the G. Let's go back to the C there. All right, let's record that. I like that idea. That works pretty well. Let's see what that sounds like without the metronome. So instantly, way more interesting than just putting down block chords, you know? Just have some movement there. And it doesn't have to be that complex. Just have simple chords, you know? Strings sound well when you have movement in them. It's not just about the advanced harmony. It's really where how they're playing. But I realize here, this is a little bit on the low side. It works. But, you know, the great thing about having a DAW is that you can always change things immediately and try things around. So I'm going to select everything here, and I'm going to transpose this up minor third. Sorry, oh, tricky, there we go. And let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, that works too. You can always try different keys and change around to see what works the best. So, I hope that was helpful for you. Hopefully now you have an idea on how you can get started creating a little bit more interesting string arrangement rather than just holding down the keys like a piano player would do and sort of hope for the best. All right, so if you found these videos helpful, then you can always help me by hitting the like button, write a comment, subscribe, even. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can always join my Patreon while you get the MIDI files for everything I do here. You get early access to the videos. And you can also join, join my private Discord server, ask me questions whenever you like, and talk to the community.
All right. Thank you very much. I hope to see you back soon. Take care.